This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Athletic Greens. Now, comic books are, among many things, a great source of body dysmorphia. There's simply no way for most of us to ever achieve the proportions and musculature of your average comic book superhero, no matter how much time we spend down at the gym. And that's especially true of anything that Rod Liefeld ever drew. Not that you'd even want your body to be in some of these shapes. Yeah. But uh, for women, in addition to the superhero's body mass index being virtually unattainable, most women in comics are just rocking a serious set of cans. And yeah, there's surgery for that, but do you think Wonder Woman has the plastic surgeon? No. Those are big naturals that only Amazonian genetics can provide. Mm -hmm. But why are we talking about voluptuous, hand-drawn comic book jugs? A wooga. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, you see, it wasn't always this way. Just like how male superheroes haven't always been as jacked as they are now, female superheroes have gotten noticeably bustier over the years. Now, this is obvious to the naked eye, but exactly how much bigger have these bosoms gotten? Well, the website PriceCharting.com, which tracks the price of video games, trading cards, sports cards, and comic books, recently conducted a painstaking study into the topic of comic book boob sizes to find out. Here's their report. While loading tens of thousands of comic book covers to Price Charting's new online comics price guide, we noticed that the portrayal of female characters seemed to become much more racy as the decades passed. Curiosity got the best of us, so we ran a study to understand just what has changed about the female form in comics over time. You know, for science. What we found was significant, but not unexpected. Modern day covers feature busts that consume more than triple the cover space and show twice the amount of cleavage compared to comics from the mid 20th century. But that's not all we found. Now, you may be wondering just what kind of methodology went into this study. The authors say that they first selected three female-led comic franchises that have had large readerships over the past several decades. Wonder Woman, Catwoman, and Red Sonja. They randomly selected several dozen cover images from the past four decades, with the rules requiring covers that feature the character's full body. They then took pixel measurements of several attributes, breast height and width, cleavage width, waist width, hip width, and cover with. Um, here are some trends that they spotted. Since the early era of female dominant comics, the amount of cover attention placed on the bust has steadily increased. The decade beginning 2010 was the most prominent decade for breasts, as nearly 30% of the cover width was occupied by bosoms. Cover artists took great liberty with breasts in the decade beginning 2010, as both percentage of cover and percentage of cleavage peaked during that time frame. Perhaps artists have since felt the pressure to normalize the look of their female characters, as both metrics have begun to recede moving into the 2020s. We recorded hip-to-waist ratio for these three characters as well, and were surprised to observe not much change over time. We had guessed that women would have filled out in the waist since the early days, where pencil-thin waists were all the rage. But do they have big, thick asses? Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I Does guess... Does this kind of, like, factor into that, or...? I guess hip-to-waist ratio would, yeah. I mean... There are some women out there that, like, from the front, you're like, wow, must be something going on back there. But then it's like flat Stanley. It's a real shame, too. Yeah. Love the apple bottoms. Uh, but, yeah, this is a classic case of men will do anything, even measure a woman's breasts, pixel by pixel, rather than go to therapy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we get a better look at these trends in the graphs here. Like they said, the amount of space boobs take up on covers peaked around 2010 uh, after steadily rising since 1960. But the amount of cleavage shown peaked back in 2000 and has been on a pretty steep decline since then. Meanwhile, hip-to-waist ratio has varied quite a bit over the decades, but has stayed within a pretty narrow range between 160% and 180%. After compiling this data, the authors decided to widen the scope of their research by adding 12 more characters to the study, including Harley Quinn, Black Widow, and Elektra. And while the data points are all over the place, the key trends from before remain. Here's their final conclusions. Busts occupy more than triple the cover space today. The amount of cleavage shown has more than doubled. Cleavage of greater than 50% was not observed until the 1970s, at which point it became relatively common. Women actually did fill out in the waist over time. Hip to waist ratio declined by 15%. Breast to waist ratio has remained the same. As breasts have grown, so have waists. Great, so now we know. There you have it, a definitive Scientific answer to a question that has surely been eating away at you for years. Have the tits in your comic books gotten bigger? Or have my eyes gotten smaller? The tits have gotten bigger. Yeah. And we know that for a fact. I mean, this is... Look, it works. Sorry, everyone. It yeah. fucking works. Yeah. You're selling comic books to a horny teenagers. A uh, hundred thousand years of evolution. You can't 
do anything about it. Yeah. And it's not like uh, some teenage and uh, young adult girls don't like uh, don't mind looking at that either. So there you go. And maybe some boys like looking at the Captain America's big schlong, almost creeping through the bottom these of his pants. Sounds like these comic books are grooming the children. <laughs> no, they're they're just these artists know what will sell comics. The same way, uh, ten years ago at Machinima, putting boobs in the thumbnail was a last ditch effort for like, well, I don't know what else will work. Just throw some tits on it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't just us doing that. It no, was, no, no, that it was, was company wide. It was everywhere. Yeah. Well, landscape wide across all of YouTube, but yeah, like, yeah. yeah, specifically at Machinima, it was like, well, it was, did you mention any female characters in the video? Oh, you did. Boom. Yeah. Well, let's just pull up a, uh, a photo there. Yeah. Let's there find the we, one with the biggest boobs. There we go. Because, well, someone's got to watch the video, right? Yeah. And it worked. It worked it every worked. time. That's, look, argue all you want. It fucking works. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on now from comic books to real life. Oh, we get to look at real life boobs now? No. Oh. Uh, anyways, real life is often more unbelievable. I've seen some big boobs out there on the internet after all. What? <laughs> hubble, hubble. Uh, arachnophobia is definitely one of the more common phobias that people are afflicted by. And unlike other fears, it's impossible to completely avoid spiders because they're everywhere. Like on your shoulder right now. There it is. That little tickle you feel on your leg, that's a spider. And while the fear is mostly irrational and most spiders have no interest at all in spending time around humans, they are objectively bizarre and horrifying creatures in a lot of ways. I mean, eight long legs, eight eyes, those weird little arms in their mouths. Some of them are furry. Uh, the way that they build giant webs and use them to capture prey is pretty fucked up, but also weirdly elegant uh, yeah. in a way. Uh, there's reasons why these things inspire more fear and disgust than other bugs. Yeah. Well, if spiders gross you out, then fair warning, all that spider B-roll that you just saw is nothing compared to the horrors that you are about to witness. All right, you've been warned. What you are now seeing is a dead spider that has essentially been reanimated by some mad scientists into expanding and contracting its legs. And the science behind this is actually incredibly simple and potentially useful. You could probably do this yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah you sicko. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the verge. Some mad lad is out there doing this to spiders. Why bother to design your own robots when you can just reuse what nature created? This was the thought process behind a research project from engineers at Rice University who successfully transformed dead spiders into robotic gripping claws. Mm. The scientists have dubbed their new area of research necrobotics Sick. and say it could create cheap, effective, and biodegradable alternatives to current robotic systems. When I say sick, I mean awesome, but also... Sick. Yeah. <laughs> this is sick. I love it, but I'm disgusted by it. Yeah. Also, Necrobotics. That's the coolest name cool ever. Word. That is like a, uh, it sounds like an 80s metal When's band. When's the album coming yeah, out? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, basically, spiders don't have muscles. They have a hydraulic system similar to heavy construction equipment, but much smaller and much more complex. A chamber in the center of the spider's body pushes and pulls fluid into and out of each leg, and that's what makes spiders' legs move. It's also delicious. Just break one of those off and yeah. get that fluid. Mm. Why aren't we using spider fluid more? A, a delicacy. So much like a science fair project on hydraulics, these researchers simply stuck a syringe into these spiders and achieved reanimation by adding and removing air from the spider's corpse. The result is the world's most fucked up claw machine, but with much better odds because spider legs are very good at grabbing onto things. Like your shirt. Right now, it's on get you. It, get it off. It's on your face. It's on the wall behind you. Smack it. Or just let it, leave it be because it eats the, the bad bugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, the researchers say that spiders can lift more than 130% of their body weight. And uh, these things are durable, too. They're able to run through a thousand open closed cycles before the joints become unusable. And, I mean, you ask me, they're using air. They need to come up with a new patented spider hydraulic fluid to keep these things running indefinitely. Yeah, like Valvoline for spiders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, designing a hydraulic system this small and efficient would be a big pain in the ass if you were to do it yourself. And why bother when nature has already done the hard work? But uh, as for what practical uses these abominations might have, uh, here's The Verge again. The work is essentially a proof of concept for now, but Preston said it could have many future applications. There are a lot of pick and place tasks we could look into. Repetitive tasks like sorting or moving objects around at these small scales, and maybe even things like the assembly of microelectronics, he said in a press statement. Another use might be collecting animal samples in nature, said Yap, as a spider grabber is inherently camouflaged. Cool. Can't wait to ch check in for my future job at the uh, the shit factory where 
um, there's just thousands of spider robots, uh, you know, doing all these tasks that I have to operate and, um, you know, do repairs on just all my spiders. This is what Jeff Bezos is going to turn to when people unionize. Yeah. He's going to be like, well, fine. The spiders took your jobs. They got eight arms. They do. Yeah. How can you compete with that? And like, I want to see that. I mean, they, and they don't have to take bathroom breaks because they're dead. They did this with wolf spiders, which are, I mean, if you saw one on your body, you'd be freaked out, but they're not that big. I want to see them do this with like a tarantula. Like they probably need to figure out that hydraulic formula, but uh, yeah. A reanimated tarantula? You could imagine all the things you could grab with that. I don't want to think about it. It's, it makes... Think about it. You know what? You should watch the movie Arachnophobia. Well, yeah. Those spiders are real big. Very, very big spiders. Big. Big, scary spiders. Big naturals. Unnaturals, I guess. <laughs> big unnaturals. Anyway, moving on now from dead bugs to live primates. Uh, by now, we're all well aware that no matter how cute a chimp might be, Gordy. those things are ruthless killing machines <laughs> who will tear you limb from limb without hesitation. And nevertheless, some people don't learn. No, they don't. They try again later. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, well... It's a messy ordeal. Yeah. But what about monkeys? I mean, aside from getting bitten by one and infected with some apocalyptic new disease, monkeys are mostly harmless, right? Wrong. If you've ever been somewhere that monkeys live, you know that they're mischievous little kleptomaniacs with an insatiable hunger for human cuisine and no sense of personal space. Basically raccoons with their agility and charisma stats maxed out. And violent drunks. Yes. Hmm. And right now the macaques of Japan, the world's northernmost non-human primates, are on a Planet of the Apes-esque crusade against their human neighbors. Here's the Associated Press. People in a southwestern Japanese city have come under attack from monkeys that are trying to snatch babies, <laughs> biting and clawing at flesh, and sneaking into nursery schools. The attacks on 58 people since July 8th are getting so bad, Yamaguchi City Hall hired a special unit to hunt the animals with tranquilizer guns. The monkeys aren't interested in food, so traps haven't worked. They have targeted mostly children and the elderly. <laughs> They're smart monkeys. They're like, we can't. There's no way we'll win against uh, an able-bodied adult human. But look at these vulnerable little children. Yes. And these pathetic elderly. Yes. Uh -huh. They seem very weak. Uh, quote, they are so smart and they tend to sneak up and attack from behind, often grabbing at your legs, said city official Masato Saito on Wednesday. It continues. A woman was assaulted by a monkey while hanging laundry on her veranda. Another victim showed bandaged toes. They were taken aback and frightened by how big and fat the monkeys were. <laughs> the monkeys terrorizing the community are Japanese macaque, the kind often pictured peacefully bathing in hot springs. One male monkey measuring 49 centimeters, 1.6 feet in height and weighing seven kilograms, 15 pounds, was caught Tuesday by the team with the tranquilizer gun. It was judged by various evidence to be one of the attacking monkeys and put to death. Oh. But more attacks were reported after the capture. Oh, well, the, you pissed off the rest of the macaques. 15 pounds, that is literally smaller than my chihuahua. It would beat your ass, too. Yeah. It's all arms. Yeah. All limbs. Yeah. It'll crawl all over you before you even know where to reach. Yep. Uh-huh. According to other reporting, that monkey they captured and killed was initially believed to be the one monkey doing these attacks which apparently also included an old man being attacked in his sleep by a monkey that broke into his house. <laughs> Fuck. Dude, it is not a fun place to live right now. No. Uh, but it's now believed to be an entire marauding group of monkeys. And yeah, there have been multiple reports of these monkeys trying to steal people's babies. A monkey stole me baby! Not funny. Trying to steal your kid and raise it as one of their own. Yeah. Well, Tarzan. Japanese Tarzan. Yep. Uh, here's the New York Post. A distraught mother recalled how one of the furry bandits tried to make off with her child. I was vacuuming in the living room and heard the sound of my baby crying loudly, the mom said, according to the London Times, citing a local television station in Yamaguchi. When I went in to check, there was a monkey pulling the baby across the floor as if trying to make off with it. Another father described how he heard crying and rushed downstairs at his home. Then I saw a monkey hunching over my child, he told the Mainichi Shimbun Daily, according to CBS News. The, what do they want with these babies? It's so scary, too, because it's like, there's really no defense. Yeah, what do you do? That you could mount against a monkey who has opposable thumbs. And it's so small, it's attacking your baby. Like, I mean, if you, like, get, like, a stick or something, you're, you might hit your own baby. Like, how do you get between them? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. Yeah. It's a much smaller hitbox. You know... I think at one point, there's gonna, people are going to be so scared, they're going to be sleeping with their babies all night, every night, 
But then some crafty monkeys are going to come in. One's going to slide into your arms yeah. while the other one takes the baby. I'm the baby now. And then it mauls you when you wake up. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. If we if it's not COVID, it's monkeys. And they're so small. Like, I mean, any little opening, they'll find a way in. And they will poop all over the place. Yeah, they'll throw it at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, this kind of thing is extremely unusual for this type of monkey. And no one has any clue what's caused them to turn to violence. And you may be wondering just what exactly are you supposed to do? About 30 to 50 Japanese monkeys that run into your house within three to five minutes while your small children are at play. Well, the obvious answer is to use your Assault Rifle 15, the AR-15, the Assault Rifle 15. That's what it stands for. Over in Japan, they don't have those. They weren't invented yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as as we, we saw recently, uh, if you're Japanese and you want a gun, you have to build one yourself from scratch. Yeah. It's a, hmm, where did we see that? Yeah, I, I don't remember. <laughs> it's been so long. Anyways, if that's not an option, though, Yamaguchi city officials recommend the following. When confronted by a monkey, the instructions are, do not look them in the eye. Make yourself look as big as possible, such as spreading open your coat, then back away as quietly as possible without making sudden moves. My work here is done. Just do that move. This is just viral marketing for Nope. Well, these are monkeys, not chimps. Still, don't look it in the eye. Yeah. They don't like being looked in the eye. No, and who does? Yeah, what are you staring at? Like, okay. What are you staring at, smooth skin? That's the thing. If you're walking down the street and you catch someone across the street just staring you dead in the eyes, yeah. you're going to be like, are we fucking going? Uh, either that or you're going to run. It's fight or flight. What am I, an animal to you? <laughs> Some sort of zoo animal? I'll show you who the animal is. Yeah. Rip them limb from limb. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, scary stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Couldn't be us. And by us, I mean United States. Americans. We got 15 assault rifles ready to go. If if monkeys ever came to America, they would be extinct very quickly. (laughs) Luckily, we'll never have that problem. No. No. Yeah. We never have invasive species problems, especially in Florida. Never. You know there's snails now there that are, like, uh, ruining things? Yeah, the African snail, the giant ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. talked about that. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. The yeah. just freakish, like, you know, dinosaur-era-looking snails. They eat fucking concrete. Uh, they carry diseases. Salmonella. Uh, they are just ravaging ecosystems. Florida yeah. really is such a... It's, a, it's, it's a, a petri dish. It's a science experiment. Yeah. I wish it was a different country... So we could just like, hey, you guys keep doing whatever you want down there. I mean, we should do the Bugs Bunny thing. um, Because like, yeah, it's every invasive species in the U.S. seems to come enter through Florida. Yeah. Um, We'd be probably better off if we built a, you know, a little barrier. Make Florida an island. The worst invasive species. Uh, Graduates of Florida State University. That's going to be my my red hat. Make Florida an island again. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I think we're on to something. Here. I think it was originally an island. Mm. Like, how would it just be jutting out like that? That's well, strange. Well, it was like Pangea or whatever, and then they, things just broke off. You, you could see where it came from. It's just a little dongle hanging off there. My favorite thing from the, the Pangea animations is, like, India is just, like, its own thing. and just comes, like, crashing into Asia, and that's how you get... That's how you got Mount Everest. The, the Himalayas, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like India just, like... For out of nowhere, just pops up. Yeah, like a fucking WWE wrestling match. <laughs> Boom! Himalayas, bitch! Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Earth is cool. It is cool. But moving on now from monkey news to news about another primate, humans. The most dangerous game. <laughs> uh, our generation of human has noticeably had less success and prosperity than previous generations, and there are many theories <laughs> as to why. Uh, you know, wages lagging far behind inflation for decades, the cost of higher education soaring exponentially over time, the shift in the labor market from full-time careers to gig work, the housing market having an increasingly huge barrier to entry, and so on and so on. I mean, by most economic metrics, the baby boomer generation had it much easier than the generations that came after it. And the boomers, they made sure of that. Yeah. This is by design. But if you ask your average boomer why so many millennials are barely scraping by, the explanation is much more simple. It's all those expensive avocado toasts you're eating. You 20-year-old millennials. Yes. You little you, kids. You teenage millennials. Yeah, all of your millennial woes would disappear immediately if you simply stopped eating avocado toast and instead saved that money for later, you idiot. 
Put the avocado toast down and listen to your elders for once. They got the knowledge that you need. They didn't even have avocado toast. Yeah, no. You eat breakfast like me. It needs to be uh, 1,500 calories full uh -huh. of saturated fat and cholesterol yes. and kill you at 55. Uh-huh. That's what a man eats. Exactly. Why would I be caught with something so exotic yeah. as an avocado? It's green. Ugh. Ugh. Toasting bread? Disgusting. I eat my bread raw. Yeah, <laughs> raw bread. <laughs> I, I, I use raw bread to scoop up the egg yolk on my table uh, on my plate after chowing down uh, three servings of bacon. That's right. That's how we do it. Uh, so this association between avocado toast and millennial personal finance, it actually originates back in 2017, which I feel like is a lot more recent than I think. But uh, it there you go. When Australian millionaire real estate developer Tim Gurner said on 60 Minutes Australia, when I was trying to buy my first home, I wasn't buying smashed avocado for $19 and four coffees at $4 each. We're at a point now where the expectations of younger people are very, very high. And later in the interview, when asked if young people will never own a home, he adjusted the numbers, saying, absolutely. When you're spending $40 a day on smashed avocados and coffees and not working, of course. Wow. I'd love to meet this person spending, just going out, chugging like... Four espressos? Yeah, just chugging four coffees and uh just, eating the most decadent avocado yeah toast. eating the most expensive avocado toast in town for every meal and then being like where'd my money go where'd my money go my favorite part is that the ingredients of an avocado toast are so cheap yeah you could sit you could eat avocado toast every day for cheaper than like probably a bowl of cereal i did that for a while yeah i got tired of it um but yeah there was like a good like six months where i was making avocado toast at home for Almost every morning. I mean, if you want to get real basic with it, it's avocado, onion, and red pepper flakes. Yeah. There, you can do some other stuff. Yeah, you, they, uh, you can. It's a fun dish because there's all you sorts got a base. of... Yeah. You Yeah, it's a base that you can kind of do whatever you want with after that. And here's the thing. Fuck you. It's delicious. It is. Yeah. And nutritious. Very good for you. So, yeah, Tim Gurner is a millennial himself, oh, 18, actually. 18, 19... <laughs> no, I think I think he's around forty. But uh, so yeah, but boomers see him saying stuff like this about uh, the fellow members of his gen his generation, and they eat that shit up. It's like, see, if he can do it, so can you. Why can't you be like Tim Gurner, a good boy? Never mind that part of Tim Gurner's success story involves a one hundred and forty thousand dollar bank loan right out of high school, and probably, almost certainly, uh, plenty of other head starts and connections that are simply outside the reach of most people that age. Um, if he can do it. Why can't you? So yeah, for the last five years, avocado toast has been a go-to talking point for anyone wanting to make the case that millennial struggles are entirely of their own making. Yeah, this is, of course, ridiculous on its face. No one's eating restaurant avocado toast plus four lattes <laughs> five days a week and then complaining that they don't even have enough money to do anything with. Like, nobody's doing this. Yeah, this person does not exist. And uh, even if they were, giving all that up would certainly save a few thousand dollars a year, but still not enough to make much of a dent in, I don't know, the cost of a college degree or a house. Yeah. The economic reality facing young people is not something that can be solved entirely through scrimping and saving. It is institutional at this point. Yeah, it's much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, avocado toast has become a symbol of millennial decadence, uh, especially in Australia. And now, after years of being told to stop eating it, uh-oh, Turns out there's an avocado surplus in Australia. They farm too much avocado. What? And the boomers, now they're begging everyone, please eat as many avocados <laughs> as possible. We need to get the avocado prices back up and save this economy. Love this. Don't you like farmers? Release the millennials. And uh, I mean, yeah, cheap avocados sounds great. But mm -hmm. asking us to eat more avocado toast after years of telling me the opposite, I don't know. It's a bit rich, in it? Yeah. The irony was on full display on Twitter, obviously, and particularly in response to a tweet from ABC News, which said, amid an oversupply of avocados, how can we find ways to eat more? Here are some tips. A one Twitter user succinctly summed up a lot of people's feelings with, well, 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 look who's come <laughs> crawling back. Uh, another said, while boomers were partying in their homes with affordable mortgages, we studied the avocado toast. And now that the crates are full and the barbarians are at the gates, they have the nerve to ask us for help. I studied the toast. <laughs> Another summed up everything with, the millennials are overspending on avocado toast to millennials are killing avocado toast pipeline? Yeah, it's uh, we, we just can't win. Either we're eating too much avocado toast, not enough avocado toast. I don't know what you want me to do. Which is it?
uh, I will continue eating it. My wife, my wife makes a great avocado toast. It's very easy to make. Yeah. And again, you can customize it in all sorts of different oh, ways. Oh, you know what's so good? Uh, every once in a while, Trader Joe's has uh, like infused olive oil. Yeah. Rosemary infused ol olive oil on an avocado toast with uh, maybe a little, uh, you know, cilantro or some rice. Or not rice. Uh, sorry, salt. Like really thick cracked salt. Yeah. Oh, boy, my stars. Yeah, some, some friends of my parents uh, own an olive farm in Central California. And they, so I, I, I'm always getting these little bottles of like different flavored uh, olive oils and they're all fucking delicious. And yes, on an avocado. Yeah. You can bear, you can't beat it. Slice up some cherry tomatoes, put that on there. Some Himalayan salt. There you go. Some. Uh, the secret though, that olive oil. And that's how Europeans stay skinny. That is olive oil. Yeah. Olive and oil, heavy cream and cigarettes. Chocolate. And don't forget the cigarettes. Yeah. The appetite suppressant. A cigarette. <laughs> but speaking of foods that are generally expensive with, uh, or which some people love and others find disgusting, oysters are definitely an acquired taste. A taste that I have very much acquired. I love the taste of it. Uh, the idea of cracking open the ugliest seashell in the world and consuming the gooey organism living inside it in one gulp, it's pretty unappealing on its face, but for a lot of people, myself included, once you get a taste of it, uh, you are happy to throw down money for more which can be around $3 per gulp or even higher, depending on Fuck where it. you're at. Bring them out. This restaurant only serves them one day a week. Let's get them. Uh, now, okay, to be fair, we live on a coast. Yeah. People who live on the East Coast and on the West Coast probably going to be more into eating oysters. People in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. I don't know. I've, I've been in a lot of parts of this country that uh, shouldn't have sushi restaurants that do. Um, sure. Apparently, it's all done with airplanes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But you want the good stuff. And also... New England. I mean, every time I've been to an oyster place in California, I mean, they have local options, but all the best stuff is from way farther north uh, on both coasts. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're like, this just came in from Maine this morning. It's from Nova Scotia. This is from, uh, you know, Alaska. Yeah, and you got to find a balance, too. Too small and eh, too big. You're like, all right, this is... Uh, this is kind of gross. Yeah, you do want to... I mean, I like chewing on it a little bit. Getting a little bit yeah, of I flavor a, out. I move it around like a loogie. Yes, yes. <laughs> mm. I eat, what, the really good part about it is just the salt water, though. Yeah, the brine. salt is good. Yeah. Who would have thought? Anyway, yeah, even if you develop a taste for oysters, though, I mean, it is, it is still one of the ugliest foods around. There's not winning any beauty contests. Mm -hmm. So the idea of designing an anthropomorphic oyster mascot costume <laughs> for a popular oyster festival <laughs> seems like an impossible task to pull off without creating something truly horrifying. And yes, Pearl, the official <laughs> mascot of the Halifax Oyster Festival, is pretty damn horrifying. It's not just a giant oyster with arms and legs. It's also got about a dozen eyes oh. sticking out of its craggy shell and some luscious lips that seem to be expressing disgust at its own existence. Why did you create me? <laughs> what is my purpose? Uh, Twitter user Amy Langdon recently went viral with a picture of Pearl with the caption, This is the mascot for the Halifax Oyster Festival, and I am absolutely terrified of it. But Pearl has actually been around for six years. The festival's organizers knew that when they set out to design a mascot that it would be unusual. But the person tasked with designing Pearl went so all out with the concept that she was sure they'd ask her to tone it down. But as you can see with this original concept design for Pearl, the final product is pretty faithful. They really went there. This is another case of gritty trailblazing. Yeah. No one wants another boring mascot. They want a mascot that's going to really make them consider things. Yeah. And like, you know, Gritty's Antifa. Pearl definitely seems like she would take a run on the Capitol when, when protecting abortion rights. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pearl's out there with a pussy cap on. Pearl's going to storm the Capitol. Yeah. And nobody, you can get, please just take whatever you way. want. Please just get the fuck See out of here. See how many eyeballs that thing had? Yeah. So, yeah, people online have had a range of reactions to Pearl, with some comparing her to a biblically accurate angel and others to a Doctor Who villain. Others pointed out that, uh, there, you know, there are other examples of oyster mascots that exist in the world that have managed to not be viscerally horrifying. Some of them are actually cute. Uh, and then people who looked into this further discovered that Pearl actually became so popular at the Oyster Festival that they created a second equally terrifying mascot named Earl, <laughs> who looks pretty similar to Pearl, but has blue eyes and sports a mustache. Cool. I think Pearl needs a boyfriend. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, obviously... This is not for everyone, but neither are oysters. 
So it's perfect. And uh, apparently this year's Halifax Oyster Fest has seen a huge uptick in ticket sales for this year's event in September since Pearl went viral. So mission accomplished, I'd say. And these are aphrodisiacs. So they, it's a huge fuck fest to this place afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with Pearl and Earl. They get on a bed right in front of everyone. They yeah. just go at it. Yeah. It doesn't take long for Pearl and Earl to just be insatiable. Have you ever gone like uh, diving for oysters or scallops or anything? No. I did scalloping uh, a couple times. It's fun, but like, yeah, you see them alive and trying to get away from you and stuff. And I don't even know what a scallop looks like. In, it looks like your classic wild. imagination of what a clam or oyster would look like. Because scallops are fucking delicious, too. They are. I love a scallop. Especially when you catch them yourself, throw them in a bag, and then just take it straight to the grill. Yeah. Um, you should do it. Next time Next time you go to Florida, next yeah. time you're around Destin or something like that, we'll, uh, we'll go. Yeah, and I think oysters are similar to like lobsters, where for a long time... It was not. Like some, trash food? Yeah, it was like, it was just like the shittiest fucking, like, oh, these people are so poor, they're eating fucking oysters. God. And then someone realized it's actually delicious and flipped the whole thing on its head. Yeah, the, the scallops have like, if I'm remembering correctly, it's like a shell and they have like little like mustache or whatever hairs coming out the front to like feel and then a bunch of eyeballs. Oh, they got eyes? Yeah, a bunch of them all in the front of the, at least that's what it looks like. Well. You just scoop them up, toss them in the bag, scoop them up. And that's dinner, baby. Yeah. Defenseless. Wow. Yeah. We're the monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we stole that, <laughs> stole that scallop's baby. Uh, true. Now, before we, we move on to the headlines half of this episode, this episode is sponsored by Athletic Greens. Mmm, hungry? Uh, a product that we both literally use every day. And like oysters, it doesn't look like it's going to be super delicious. But then you're like, oh, my God. The results are worth it anyway. Even yeah. if you don't like the taste. I think it tastes really good. Uh, Athletic Greens was pitched to us as a health supplement that's better than pills and capsules at getting you all the vitamins, minerals, and probiotics that your body needs. Sounds great. But we didn't expect it to be delicious as well, nor did we expect to feel so good. The starting the day with a scoop of AG1 is honestly more important than the first cup of coffee at this point. Yeah, my digestion has noticeably improved. So what is this stuff, though? With, all, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and again, all the things. And unlike a lot of multivitamin supplements that just go right through you, these are high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be, uh, your, your toilet's not going to glow in the dark. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost them $100 a day. And Athletic Greens costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper uh, than your cold brew habit. So it's also lifestyle friendly, whether you're uh, keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com weird. Again, that is athleticgreens.com weird to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thanks for sponsoring the show. Now let's get into the craziest, most insane, weirdest headlines from around the world this week, starting with... GOP lawmaker attends gay son's wedding days after opposing same-sex marriage bill. It be your own dad. It do be your own dad sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, this is... Uh, it, the whole... I mean, I'm, so, same-sex marriage, legal. Uh, but For now! Yeah, but after the Roe thing, people are like, oh, maybe we should, uh, maybe we should get this on the books. Maybe we shouldn't rely on the Supreme Court for this. So they, they're putting it through Congress. And um, I mean, luckily, like most Republicans even were just like, yeah, we lost this one. Like, it's fine. But some of them still holding out. And a lot Cruz? of them were like making a big mockery out of it. It was like, why do we even need this? And it's like, you know why we fucking need this. Ted Cruz did like some weird pronouncement this week that like anal sex is cool now. Like, what? he's like, we should take back the law on the books about oh, uh, sodomy. sodomy. <laughs> And everyone's like, okay, rare dub for Ted Cruz. What's going on here? Because um, a lot of straight people do it too. Some people like it. Some men prefer uh, having their butthole penetrated by a woman with some sort of device strapped to her. Not that I would know anything about that. Or Prince William, the Prince of Pegging. The Prince of Pegging. Uh, yeah, it was just weird. And it's like, maybe he's setting it up to be like, well, it's legal, so you don't have to get married. or something. Like, I, It's weird. 
there's something going on. There's always something going on with Ted Cruz. Something is afoot. So, like, if he does something good, it's like, hmm, why? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, obviously, this is not a new uh, phenomenon of yeah. uh, people not acting, like, within their own family's interests or themselves in yeah. some cases. Dick Cheney. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Although Liz Cheney, like, finally, this past week, came around. It's like, actually, I support same-sex marriage. Because when she first ran for Congress, she's like, I'd throw my own sister under the bus for the conservative agenda. That's how you know you can trust Liz Cheney. The best Republican around. Apparently, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's that's really, it's really weird. Trump really did a number on her. Yeah. And the American people. Indian politician drinks water from polluted Holy River to impress supporters, gets hospitalized. Uh, yes, the rivers, the bodies of water in India are notoriously uh, disgusting because people uh, just throw the shit in it. They throw the trash in it. Um, they hold funerals in it. Mm -hmm. And I guess they cleaned up some river and the local politician wanted to like celebrate that. And he's like, yeah, uh, I did such a good job. Me cleaning up this river that like, look at this, I'm going to drink it. And everyone around him is like, don't, don't do it. He drinks it. And then, yeah, immediately. <laughs> God, just, what's the worst that could happen? Just flooded with every possible like pathogen Ugh. you could you could ask for. But great photo op. But now he's going to be immune to everything for like six months. That's the old. That's the vaccine. Yeah, that's <laughs> got to go drink the holy water. Uh huh. It's going to hurt at first. You're going to be miserable for a yeah. long time. But after that, viruses are going to look at you and run. Hey, I don't want any trouble, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Police say people pretending to play violin for money a nationwide issue. And yeah, I've seen it. I mean, it is funny. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it a nationwide issue. I, it is a weird thing that's, I guess, spread across the nation where people pretend to play violin. And there's a really funny like local news report where a guy comes up and tries to interview the, one of these guys and the guy gets distracted and then the, the music just starts playing before he has a chance to. And then he's like, oh, it's my backing it's, track. It's like, buddy, we, we all saw it. The biggest musicians on the planet have a backing track. I... A humble busker cannot do what the other musicians are doing? Yeah. You don't think Lady Gaga and Taylor Swift have voc vocal backing tracks when they play live? Of course they do. I just don't see much of a problem with this other than it yeah, being I kind of annoying because it's like, look, you thought it was a violin until we told you it wasn't. Yeah. And that made you feel good, didn't it? Yeah. Violin, it's a lovely instrument. And what's you, the difference? Do you ask for a refund after a magic show because magic isn't real? Yeah. Like, what's the deal? This person made you hear beautiful music and you you were tricked into believing that they were creating that music with just uh, their hands and a tiny little instrument. And it made you made you feel nice. So nice that you gave them a little bit of change. And you know, what difference does it make if the music's fake? That's what I'm saying. In a dystopian way, they're doing a service for the places they play in front of because uh, a lot of places uh, that have homeless people congregate around them, play classical music my to local, drive them away. My local 7-Eleven absolutely just blasts classical music. Like, yeah. you can hear that shit down the street. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work. It's still covered in homeless people. Mm -hmm. So... It's because it's not real. You have to get a real violin. Yeah, then they're like, oh shit, I need to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Music's for nerds. <laughs> I'm going to go down over this way and sleep on that person's po uh, porch. Yep. Yeah. Citing Red Bull addiction, two arrested for allegedly stealing energy drinks, leading Las Vegas police on chase. They could have gotten away with it if they had just grown their wings and flown uh, away. Yeah. These Suing people, Red Bull for false advertising. They, they're, they've got the worst millennial addiction, the Red Bull addiction, because mm -hmm. that shit is not cheap, even if you buy it in bulk. Yeah, you'd think you'd get a discount for buying more of it, but you don't. Yeah, no, I mean, kind of, but like... Me, I'm a bang much. man. Ever since that uh, bang energy. Uh, uh, John Wilson episode. <laughs> where he visits the, the CEO of Bang in his house. Yeah. What an interesting character. Very, very interesting. But yeah, these people, they in like a week, they stole crates of Red Bull from three different places in Vegas, like two Costco's and then another store. The Red Bull Bandits. And they got pulled over with 200 unopened cans of Red Bull in their car. So they're like... it's a lot of money. They blamed it on their Red Bull addiction. Like, I wouldn't have done it. I need help. I need, I need rehab, not jail. This Red Bull addiction has made me do terrible things. I suck dick for Red Bull. Instead of a cigarette, they bring him a Red Bull in the confession. Yeah, oh, yeah that's good. <laughs> Sitting there like true detective. All right, make, what are you... Making a little art piece out of it. What do you need to know? <laughs> Thank God. I'll tell you anything. <laughs> you see uh, what uh, Vegas is like, ha is having like flash floods and shit right now. And like what? rain pouring into the casinos. 
What? I guess they got like uh, some flash storms out there in the middle of the desert and uh, yeah, flooding everywhere. And Oh, shit. It sent some of that water this way. Hey, yeah. It's actually the mob was like, call the clouds. We need to cover up those bodies in Lake Mead. They found another one this Yeah, they week. keep finding them all the time. Yeah. I don't know if this one was in a barrel, but... Uh, Eventually, someone's going to have, like, posed a body there. Like, hey, I found this one. Yeah. Totally just found it. Probably oh, my God, he's still alive. <laughs> this was probably pretty old. Not Definitely not killed recently. <laughs> it's an old body. Probably started looking for... Hello, it. officer. <laughs> uh, I'd like to report a body that I found in Lake Mead. Oh, yeah. uh, this is, like, hours old. No, not, no, 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 no. No, it's... Uh, they, they put it... They preserved it. It's an old it. one. It's Pickles. The person was definitely killed before I moved to the Las Vegas area five years ago. Mm -hmm. So couldn't have been me or, or, you know, just saying. No, I won't go down to the police station. No, unless you got some Red Bull. I would take a Red Bull. That'd be yeah. great. <laughs> Florida man attempts to break into Space Force base to warn of alien dragon space war. Do they have a base now? I yeah, I mean, they are, they are a branch of the military. Um, I mean, I guess all they're doing is like satellite... Uh, they handle the satellite launches. Yeah, okay. That's pretty much it. Um, they have uniforms that. Why aren't they out weird. there fucking uh, blasting that uh, falling rocket? I don't know. Get your jetpacks on and get up there. Some space force we've got. Yeah, embarrassing. But yeah, first of all, if it's a if it's a base, I assume they have security stopping people from coming onto it. But like that that air base in California, this person, I don't know if they were dressed as a ninja, but they they managed to get in. And they're well, who's going to uh, attack the Space Force? They're like, hey, Space Force, just letting you in on something. Uh, there's a, there's an alien dragon space war going on. The Chinese, they have dragons and they're fighting against American aliens up in space. Just just and letting you know. They're, and they're like, we fucking know we're the Space Force, buddy. They just jettisoned a rocket and it's crashing towards Earth. We know all about the space dragons. Get the fuck off of our Space Force base. I can't wait for Russia to build that new space station and the Space Force to just immediately go like smash it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We'll be fighting a really awkward zero-G fight up there. Just doing donuts in front of it. Yeah. Oh, Alex Jones's lawyer apologizes after heated courtroom spat and flipping bird to plaintiff attorney in Sandy Hook defamation trial. What a fucking circus. Yeah, he, he really picked the, the most Alex Jonesy lawyer in in Texas. Yeah, the dude literally flipped off the other the the plaintiff's attorney. The attorney for the victims of Sandy Hook. Um yeah, the whole thing. This, they just declared bankruptcy. Infowars did. Well, of course, because that way they don't they have to pay up. They protect their... Yeah, uh, yeah but uh, it's bad. He's, this is like... I think this is just the sentencing to find out how much he has to pay. But he's been sued in so many different jurisdictions over this. Like, I don't know how he's going to financially recover. Well, they always do, don't they? They do. Mm -hmm. Except for Milo he, Yiannopoulos. I don't know if he will, though. I don't know. It'll be interesting. We'll see. We'll see. He flew too close to the sun. He did. Yes. He went from the underground to the White House like that. Yeah, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. When he was still just some crank on like local AM radio in Texas, it was just <laughs> like, oh, that's Alex Jones. Who cares? He does his thing. But then it's like, oh, he's friends with Donald Trump. That, is, that means he's legit. Not just friends, like in person with him. Yeah. I think he was one of the first like journalists or outlets to endorse Donald Trump. Well, which is fucking Breitbart. wild. Yeah. Yeah. Sims 4 update accidentally adds incest. Whoops. Accidentally, add, yeah. Whoops! Oh my god! Oh, the DLC oh, has a washing machine with a woman stuck in it. Yeah, they. I I have never played The Sims. They but they added some new mechanic, and they forgot to dot their eyes and cross their T's in the code. It was basically the characters now have like wants, like so it shows desires. like desires. Yeah, they have desires that you can see on screen, and so people are like, why does this character desire to date her son? Like, why does this character desire to date his sister? And they're like, oh, shit, we're fixing it. We didn't mean to do that. Because porn has ruined this country. Why is this character stuck in the washing machine? Again. Oh, her black thong just keeps appearing out up, up the top of her pants as she bends <laughs> over. Oh, there was another <laughs> another glitch in this update made a character's age, like, extremely fast. Like, they go from baby to old person in, like, five minutes. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. The, the Jack disease. Mm-hmm. Chick-fil-A is asking volunteers to work for five chicken sandwiches per hour. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, why, don't we, why not just hire them? Mm, uh, we just need them for the lunch rush. So we a lot of paperwork, W-2s. I, I think this is great because this gets the boomers back in. 
Nobody wants to work anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then that. Hey, Gerald, get down here and, and put Chick-fil-A, a fucking They're on. like, look, a lot of you people might not like it, but a lot of people have signed up. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, it might not just be boomers. People might just be that cucked and desperate. They're or like, hungry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm sure they give you five like vouchers, but I like the idea that they're like, all right, eat all five right now. No takeaway. Yeah. You can't leave the building yeah, with you the five eat sandwiches. All five you can Chick-fil-A eat them sandwiches. during your shift. Let's go. Spread it out. Let's go, Joey Chestnut. Eat those fucking sandwiches. He's doing another one uh, soon where he eats the most like raisin canes ever or something. Okay. Fried uh-huh. chicken's tough. Yeah. That... I would feel like the temperature inside would just be a lot if they're fresh. I had it for the first time. They just opened one here. Oh, did they? I've never had it. It's whatever. Yeah. It's not like I didn't bite into it and go, oh, God. Oh, my God. This is. What, how have I lived without this? Yeah. There's a couple things that have done that. Zanku, that actually lives up to the hype. Gus's fried chicken lives up to the hype. Gus's is damn good. If you want the spiciest thing possible, it's now franchised everywhere in the fucking country. Dave's Hot Chicken. Started here in Hollywood, and then now it's like in every corner Dave's of the goddamn good. states. What's the one in Chinatown? Oh, um... Uh... I can't remember. I've never been able to eat there. The line's always too long. I've never eaten there, but actually the pandemic was a blessing in disguise because they went all takeout Mm -hmm. and it suddenly just became very easy on like Uber Eats to just be like, yeah, I don't care if it gets here in like two hours. I just want to try it. And it is good. Yeah. Not good enough to wait for like two hours like you used to have to, but now you can know without having to stand in that damn line. It's the same thing over here. I, I just never go downtown to that area, but like that Raisin Cane's was like, there were police there for like the first two weeks, like because traffic was such a mess. I walked in and was just like, all right, yeah, take the chicken. Cool. Yeah. This is fine. Their sauce is good. I like the sauce. Yeah. Yeah. What is pink sauce? A Pepto-colored condiment is turning heads and stomachs on TikTok. You're on TikTok. You seen this shit? I'm actually not. I deleted TikTok two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. After, like, the fifth report of them just harvesting data uh, so terribly and all of it, like, blatantly going to the Chinese company, I was just like, you know what? I don't need this. And I deleted yeah. it. And um, you'll, you'll still see the best stuff. It'll filter through. Yeah. Reddit. My wife still has it. She'll pull it up and show me. Yeah. And Reddit and stuff but like yeah, that. But yeah, this woman uh, on TikTok, I don't understand why this went particularly viral, but she invented her own sauce called pink sauce. And it is, it looks like Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, that's why it went viral because uh, it's like absurdly pink. And she was like promoting it and like trying it, but like never told anyone. Like people were like, well, what does it taste like? And she finally, like after weeks was like, oh, it tastes kind of like ranch. Um, yeah. And then she started selling it, like actually marketing and selling it. But then she got in trouble because like, I guess she just sort of eyeballed and or just made up the nutrition facts. It's just like, I don't know. There's like 444 servings in the bottle because that's an angel number. Like that guy on Nathan. I guess she's into that also, numerology. Also, I'm not positive, but I believe there's like dairy in it, which also yeah. like, you have to keep refrigerated. I saw one video. Uh, she was just shipping them in like USPS, like envelopes yeah with like you know a little bit of bubble wrap on the inside but like people were getting them and they did open it up it's just like exploded and like curdled on the inside um yeah a little bit sketchy but yeah i guess this is all the rage on tiktok this damn pink sauce look <laughs> like the the fda is gonna come down and be like hey knock it off you're getting people sick so i, I guess in florida they have like cottage laws where you're allowed to sell food products without like uh you know being you're not you can sell your own sauce in florida without well, all think, that regulation i think you can do that in a lot of places i know you can bottle and sell your own stuff at like farmers markets and stuff but i think when it comes to like dairy like yeah. something that has to be pasteurized refrigerated anything like that there are clearly regulations but that's also very funny because florida is a state where you literally can't legally give Homeless people food for free? Yeah. What a state. Yeah. Land of the free. Mm-hmm. Saw it off. And final headline. Joe Biden's eyes in video spark wild conspiracy theories. And let's just let's just show you what we're talking about here, because this is pretty wild. Those who have served their time should qualify not only for Pell Grants to earn a degree, but get access to good jobs and training, affordable housing, food and medical benefits. All these steps will reduce crime and prevent crime from happening in the first place. And my Safer American plan is part of my administration's relentless efforts to invest and empower black communities to be architects of their own future. 
So what happened? I'm very confused about this. So my theory is, I mean, the man just had COVID. He was probably uh, probably feeling a bit drowsy. He and, is like 97 years old. And the White House doctor came in and just jabbed him in the ass with some of those drugs that only the president has access to. And then that maybe gave him a little too much. Uh, did the calculations wrong. And Joe was zooted. I don't know why they didn't just start the video over. I don't know why they had to it's cut. It's a very short clip. It's like, yeah, yeah, less than, it's like a minute and a half. I don't know why they had to cut and pick up. Just redo the whole thing. Oh, they're like, bro, have you seen YouTubers? They just do, they take a cut every Jump two cuts, seconds. No yeah. one cares. But yeah, his, um, he's on something. He does not blink. His eyes are well, my like theory, dinner plates. My theory that I, that I said to you was like, Joe Brandon, he's an old school guy. He's the salt of the earth. He probably had his coach in there. He's like, give me some smelling salts. Yeah. I like to do things the old fashioned way. <laughs> Woo! Give me some of that Spanish fly. Because that's like, what well, if you're passed out, they do the smelling salts, you wake right up. It's, yeah. It's what happens. Have you ever done those? No. They had them uh, in, in Italy. It was like a, they had like fancy ones at this like apothecary thing. I was like, like, do you want to sample it? And I was like, yeah. It feels like someone jammed a screwdriver up your nose. Oh, that sounds horrible. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not for like casual use. It's supposed to wake you up out of a coma, basically. Wow. Oh. Okay. It's basically just like, I think it's just like ammonia or something in there. Oh, God. Yeah, that yeah. sounds horrible. Uh, anyways, that's my theory is he, he yeah. did it the old school way. I mean, a lot of give people... Give me some steroids. Give me some smelling salts. I mean, yeah. They, I mean, something happened and it looks like it involved substances. But um, yeah, people are like, oh, he's a hologram. He's a deep fake. It's he didn't like, blink. I mean, it'd be funny if they just deep faked his eyes because he was blinking too much. Yeah. They're like, can you just deep fake some new eyes on me? And it's just like... So... I don't know. Um, president doing great. Yeah. Clearly. We'll see how he looks in two years. Probably yeah. even more tired. In two years, his eyes are going to be half the size of his head. <laughs> he looks like I like to someone. Someone like replied to that with the Mr. Burns as an alien on The Simpsons when they were giving him like the drugs in his yeah. eyes. <laughs> Well, uh, whatever it is, it's working. <laughs> it worked. They just it's hooked up. Him. They hooked up a syringe to all of his limbs, and that's he's just a puppet now. Yeah, it's weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. If you haven't already, please watch our two most recent episodes. We have a new episode of News Dump that talks all about how Facebook and Instagram are doing a little bit of a downturn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, uh, Trump has some very select words for America that he wants you to know about. Yeah. So uh, check out that video and the most recent episode of uh, Tech News Day involving Elon Musk cucking the world's, what, sixth richest man? Eighth. Something like that. Yeah. Check both of those videos out. Subscribe to the channel. Click the join button if you want. Leave a comment and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.